Back to oil. Uh, up a buck 80 now, $67 a barrel. I want to bring in uh, David Barnson because I don't understand what's going on here, David. If you raise production by 600,000 barrels and OPEC says that's what they're going to do, why does the price of oil go up more than 2%? It should go down if you're raising production. But not if they were expecting it to be uh, a higher production increase, which is exactly what happened. Oil had overcorrected. They were expecting a million to a million eight. They came out with a million, but here's the thing, Stuart. They're prorating it across members. Venezuela, Iran, and Iraq have no more capacity. So they're not going to be contributing, which is where you're getting the 600,000 figure. Mm. So the reason prices are going higher is simply because the news was not to the degree that was expected. Now, I, did you see this coming? Because for a long time on this program, you said invest in the big oil companies, specifically Exxon. You see it coming because Exxon's at 81 today. Yeah, Stuart, if I ever give the impression that I got something right because of a one-month or three-month projection, then I'm doing something wrong. My thesis was not about what OPEC would do now. My thesis is about what America will do for the next five and ten years. We are the marginal producer of oil, not OPEC, not Saudi Arabia. Our thesis is based on the fact that we have more production capacity and we have a lower cost structure to produce it than we've ever had because of our technology, our innovation. This is a long-term story based on the Exxons and Chevrons that we've talked about on your show before and based on the pipelines that need to get that oil to market. David, we'd love having you on the show because not only do you deal with the market as an active investor, but you also uh, are prepared to answer political questions. And I've got one for you. Okay. Here we go. Amazon employees upset about giving facial recognition technology to the police. Google engineers refusing to build a security tool that would help and win military contracts. They don't want to defend our country. I find this really bad news, David, when our very powerful technology giants refuse to defend America, refuse to help the police force. I th I've got a problem with those tech companies, all of them. Do you? I do, Stuart, but let me say something. <clears throat> I don't believe that this is a political issue. I believe that you're identifying a cultural problem. The disconnect in Silicon Valley, which is reasonably pro-market, pro-innovation, pro-growth, and obviously pro-profits, last time I checked, <laughs> their, their uh, impulse to be opposed to national security and rule of law is a tremendous cultural problem that comes down to the fact that people are no longer being educated about the first things and foundations and nature of our liberty. I can't say this strongly enough. It is not a mere political fight, and it is obviously not an economic or market contention. This comes down to an underlying struggle in the country about the very principles and foundations where we come from. And I think that it, it, it speaks to a deeper cultural issue, and I very much believe that we have to get it sorted out in the years to come. Real fast, let's get back to money for a second. When you look at the five big technology companies, they're going to be reporting their numbers, their profits in, what, two or three weeks' time, I think it is. Can they keep up that 20, 30, 40 percent sales growth, revenue growth increases? Can they do that? Uh, each company has to be looked at differently. I would say as a kind of generic answer, no. Some of them will uh, surprise to the upside top line revenue. Some will not. But they, they, at this point, more than any point, really need to be bifurcated and, and not viewed monolithically. And I think each one has a different, different revenue and profit outlook. And all of them are quite expensive. Got it. David Barnson, it's always a pleasure. And we thank you for joining us again today. Thanks, David. Thank you. Sir.